Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Rainbow Children Medicaid Limited earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and anyone who wishes to ask a question may enter star and one on their touchdown phone. To remove yourself from the queue, please enter star and two. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this call is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Ragnikar from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, Siddharth. Thank you, Tanvi. Welcome, everyone, to the earnings conference call of Rainbow Children's Medicare Limited to discuss the financial performance for the fourth quarter and full year ended March 31, 2023. We have with us Dr. Ramesh Kancherla, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Sanjeev Sukumaran, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. R. Gauri Shankar, Chief Financial Officer. and as a sort of bhandari group business analyst before we commence i would like to share that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward looking in nature and may involve certain risks and uncertainties a detailed statement in this regard is available in the quarter 4 fy23 results presentation that is hosted on the company's website and also uploaded on the stock exchange sites i would now like to invite dr ramesh to make his opening comments over to you sir Thanks, Siddharth. Uh, good morning, everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the earnings call for the fourth quarter and for the full year FY23. It's been one full year since we had our IPO, and when when I look back at the the last year's journey, the few things stand out. Rainbow remains the only listed pediatric hospital chain in English-speaking world. Consequently, the listed universe. has no peer comparison for the financial analysts as well as investors therefore ever since the ipo in may 22 we had to seriously engage with the investors both in india and overseas and explain the various building blocks of our business model our key differentiators and the significant growth opportunity in our business model and its potential our efforts are bearing fruit and there is a perceptibly a better comprehension of our business model among the investor and analyst community i must say that and i have i have really enjoyed this journey of evangelizing children self care and its business potential once again to reiterate our clinical model pediatric services and rainbow brand includes newborn and pediatric intensive care services pediatric multi specialty care pediatric quaternary care organ transplantation birth right by rainbow is an integrated obstetric model vertical which includes normal and complex obstetric care multidisciplinary fetal care perinatal genetics and fertility care along with gynecological services rainbow children's hospital is built on a strong fundamentals of multidisciplinary approach with a full time consultant uh, uh, engagement model uh, with a commitment of 24 by 7 service in a child centric environment We run India's largest academic training program for the pediatrics and the pediatric super specialties in the private healthcare sector, offering training uh, in DNB postgraduate training program as well as uh, fellowship programs in various specialties, including uh, intensive care services as well as pediatric super specialties. Historically, the strong momentum of the second quarter and third quarter. with the papers down in the fourth quarter with the examination season and the beginning of the summer holiday vacation however this time the strong momentum witnessed in the second and third third quarter continued into the fourth quarter across all the key operating metrics including outpatient protocols in patient volumes and occupancy i am pleased to inform you that the company has delivered robust quarterly performance led by high patient footfalls across all hospitals the revenues for the q4 fy23 was uh, uh, 360 crores 16 crores which is a growth of 49.2% compared to the 212 crores which is uh, uh, in in uh, q4 fy22 the ebitda for q4 fy23 was 98 crores which is a growth of a 103% compared to the 48.1 crores In, in Q4 FY22, and the PAT for Q4 FY23 was 53.8 crores, which is a growth of 339 percent compared to the 12.2 crores in Q4 FY22. 
The occupancy for the quarter was 58.8%, which is significantly higher compared to the 39.6% in the corresponding quarter of the last year. The occupancy was higher compared to the even previous uh, quarter, occupancy of 57.1%. This is as a result of continued momentum of Q3 and Q4 with the various uh, uh, illnesses, like especially viral illnesses uh, in the community, which is leading to a kind of a, a increased footfall as well as in patient admissions. In particular, adenovirus was the most common cause was, uh, of pneumonia during the season, where the children required uh, admissions for uh, admission for the longer uh, uh, period of periods of time. So coming to our uh, addition of beds and expansion, and uh, we have recently added 100 bed hospital in financial district Hyderabad, uh, commenced its operations on 1st of March 2023, and already we are seeing a, a good traction of our patients as well as in patients. So we are going to add uh, 270 beds in the current financial year. Uh, in the various geographies in Hyderabad and Bangalore and Chennai. The, Central Hyder City Hyderabad, which is Himayat Nagar, we are coming up with a 60-bed spoke hospital and a new block of uh, uh, hospital close to, uh, adjacent to the Hyder Nagar uh, existing hospital uh, is being built for the uh, growth opportunity because we've been extremely busy in the hospital, so that requires more beds. So that's going to come very soon. Ananagar, Chennai, is coming up, we're coming up with, uh, coming up with the 80 beds. The yeah, Brownfield 80 bed spoke hospital is coming in Bangalore and Sajjapur area. So an additional block with an outpatient department and an area facility at the Rainbow uh, Children's Hospital, LB Nagar, uh, spoke where to enhance the patient facilities at the existing hospital and also cater to the future growth at this hospital. We are adding a, a additional uh, uh, space in this hospital to allow it to yield some more beds to that uh, demand, for the demand. And these hospitals are expected to commence operations during the second half of the current financial year. And also there's another uh, uh, 160 beds are going to come in 18 to 20 months time, uh, which are mainly in a 100 bed facility in Rajamandri, which is, Andhra, which is one of the an important city in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, uh, and a spoke hospital in Hennur Crossroad in Bangalore City of 60 beds. So these are likely to come in about 18, 20 months time. So work is in progress. So recently the company participated in, in the e-auction held by HSVP, Haryana Shahari Vikas Pradhikaran, which is a, a, the government sites uh, for hospitals. So we've won the two bits. The one is in sector 44, with, uh, with a 2.32 acres of the land. And another one is sector 56 of 1.25 acres of land. So this both of kind of uh, uh, land passes are going to build a greenfield hospitals. Then sector 44, which is very close to Goda City Center and close to FMRI, we're going to kind of build a 300 bed facility, uh, uh, which is mainly a kind of a referral children's hospital with a tertiary quarter care services for children. So this hospital will be kind of a referral center uh, for multi-specialty pediatrics and prenatal care across Gurgaon and also northern states, as well as international patients. The yeah, spoke hospital of 100 beds will be built in sector 56, which is very close to the golf course road. And this is for the kind of rapidly growing affluent population of a Gurgaon in the uh, in golf, golf course road, as well as golf course extension road. So this hospital will be uh, a, a, to primarily kind of providing 24 by 7 emergency services for children and as well as women with a large outpatient obstetrics and pediatric inpatient services and the level 3 and ICU. With this expansion plan highlighted now, the Rainbow Group is comfortably placed to add 1,000 beds as envisioned in the business plan as outlined during the IPO and investor meetings earlier. We are, we are focusing now on execution of these projects and Time, in timely manner. Coming to clinical excellence, so we have uh, we have crossed an important mile, milestone of a million outpatients across the group. Perhaps we have actually done a 1.2 million footfalls of outpatients in the last financial year. Dr. Nageshwar Rao Koneti is the director of uh, Rainbow Children's Heart Institute. 
is a leading cardiologist. She received a patent for a device named Conar MF. This device is to close the, the heart holes for children with cardiac defects. This is being used across 60 countries. We are very proud of him uh, come, to come up with such a uh, cost-effective uh, device. Despite large patient inflows, our doctors had published 100 papers, research papers, uh, in the last one year. It gives me immense satisfaction to see such a remic interest among our doctors. We have successfully completed 20 liver transplants and five kidney transplants with excellent results. And after 20 liver transplants, we have only lost one child, and 19 of them actually gone home with a successful liver transplant. All five of them, the renal transplants, have done very well and got discharged. I take this opportunity to thank all my doctor colleagues and the paramedical staff who have put in an untiring effort to deal with such a large volume at achieving excellent outcomes. So with a well laid out business plan, our priorities are now to strive harder to deliver robust clinical outcomes with the excellent uh, patient care, strengthen our the hubs with a multi-speciality and quaternary care, and also expand our suburban spoke model in Bangalore and Chennai are the main priorities. Before I pass on the mic to our CFO uh, uh, for business update, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to welcome Mr. Sanjeev Sukumaran, who has joined us as a Chief Group Chief Operating Officer, effective from 15th April 2023. Sanjeev has come from uh, uh, has more than 25 years of experience doing various senior managerial roles across various industries. So we are very glad to have him with us. I now request Mr. Sanjeev Sukumaran to introduce himself to the audience. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm extremely pleased to have been given this opportunity by the chairperson and the board. And I really look forward to contribute to the success of this organization as we move forward in this very exciting journey. Uh, I wish to bring in the 25 years of experience that I have in various industries and work closely with the board and the chairperson and the senior leadership team over here uh, to continue to grow the business as well as to continue to bring in excellence in clinical as well as operations. And I look forward to your continued support too. Thank you. And I hand it over to uh, Mr. Gauri Shankar now. Thank you, Sanjeev. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I would like to thank you all for taking your time and joining our earning call, earning a bit call. I'll now share some insights on our financials, financial performance during the period under review. Our quarterly performance, so revenue for Q4 uh, stood at 316 crore as, and has grown by 49.2% compared to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. EBITDA for Q4 FI23 stood at 98 crore and has grown by 103.62% compared to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. EBITDA margins are at 30.91% in the current quarter as against 22.66% in the corresponding quarter last year. Expansion in EBITDA margin is an account of improved business and better operating leverage. SAC for Q4 FI23 stood at 53.86 crores and has grown by 339.34% compared to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. Fat margin are 17% in the current quarter and as again 6% in the corresponding quarter last year. Our OP and IP volume for the current quarter has grown by 48% and 57% over the corresponding period of FY22. We have recorded 59% occupancy during the quarter. Our matured hospital has witnessed 67% occupancy and new hospitals has witnessed 41% occupancy during fourth quarter. Our, our return on capital employed and return on equity stands at 24.61% and 25.36% on full year basis for FI23. And our fair mix between cash and insurance stands at 52% and 48%. 52% is cash and 48% is credit. Uh, during the Q4, 
the company has incurred about 35 crores as capital expenditure towards new projects, medical equipment, and other fixed assets. With this, I conclude my remark. We can now open the call for your valuable questions and suggestions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use hands while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Damanti Kirai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on your occupancy. So, fourth quarter obviously was very strong, uh, as Dr. Ramesh mentioned, uh, the momentum from viral uh, fever, et cetera, continued. So, uh, going ahead, how should we look at occupancy, especially for the mature hospital? Say, like, we don't see uh, such exceptional uh, cases coming due to some seasonal uh, viral fevers, et cetera. Yeah, uh, mature hospitals will continue to clock the similar occupancies. And uh, what happens for us is that, you know, we have uh, usually the quarter one generally a mutage in the sense of occupancies wise because of children on holidays in the summer season. And uh, we we do kind of uh, more of surgical work in summer season. As we move into the second and third quarters, occupancies really peaks up. Uh, uh, peaks up. So I think a mature hospital shouldn't be a big problem for occupancies because they are already kind of uh, well established. They will have a good traction of the patient uh, across the specialties as well as the pediatrics and obstetrics as well. So mature should be sustaining 60% plus occupancy. Like obviously it could be better, but 60% plus is something we can definitely look at. Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, we, we've clocked around 67% of occupancy uh, and mature hospitals you know, uh, last financial year, which is very good for us. I mean, a rainbow is uh, something we do not do uh, much of comment and other things. So it's uh, the purely uh, private uh, insurance and also the, uh, the uh, cash patients. That payer mix is uh, very different from, uh, which is, it's very difficult to kind of uh, look at uh, our occupancies uh, compared to uh, adult hospitals. Sure. Uh, my second question is uh, your average revenue per operating bed. So in FY23, uh, ARCOP grew around 4% year on year after adjusting for COVID vaccine benefit in the previous year. So uh, this looks a bit lesser than I think earlier we talked about sustaining uh, growth in high single digits. So how should we look at this uh, number ahead? And also, uh, if I look at your press release, uh, ARCO for new hospital looks better than mature hospitals in fourth quarter and full year. So uh, can you please explain this? So we, we discount the COVID vaccines from the previous year uh, of 22 that we have clocked about 48,000 uh, plus. Uh, I think we achieved that at about 4% uh, uh, growth. So that's what actually we have guided about four, four, four to five percent growth of our top year on year. So uh, when you look at the uh, the new hospital, uh, which is the our pops are about forty nine thousand extra, because what happens in new hospitals is that you know they kind of uh, are focused on a very uh, small areas of business with uh, uh, more of a deliveries and more of ICUs, less occupancies. That skews, that skews more towards a higher ARPOPs. When you get a occupancy levels increased, uh, the hospital matures that get moderated. Um, my last question is on uh, your SCF field. So obviously on the EBITDA level, you have been uh, like uh, you have been delivering one of the best margin across listed hospitals. But if I look at the SCF field, uh, my suggestion, uh, my calculation suggests is. It should be around 1%. So that looks like a very uh, less for the kind of margin which you make on your business. So uh, can you explain it and how should we look at uh, HCS yield uh, going ahead as uh, some of your key uh, units uh, reach maturity? Uh, I'm very sorry. I did not, not understand not the question. Yeah. Uh, it's about what uh, yield on uh, you're taking the free cash flow or... Uh, 
या फ्री कैश फ्लो या कमिंग अराउंड वन परसेंट फॉर एस आई ट्वेंटी थ्री डिस्पाइट लाइक हैविंग सच हेल्दी मार्जिन सो इफ यू कैन एक्सप्लेन लाइक वाई शुड बी सो लो एंड हाउ शुड बी लुक एट इन कमिंग फ्यूचर कमिंग ईयर um i think you know your uh, we, we will uh, take take this question later uh, ramanthi you don't mind okay sure thank you i'll get back to you we, we need to uh, learn more understanding on this we'll take it later yeah. thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen a reminder to you if you wish to ask any questions please enter star and one the next question is from the line of pansi desai from jp morgan please go ahead Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking my questions and uh, congratulations on good set of numbers again. Uh, so my question is on uh, the Gurugram uh, acquisition. Uh, you know that uh, we have announced. So this is a greenfield expansion. Um, you know this is very different from our uh, previous strategy where you know we have uh, expanded on a very asset line manner. So uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, you know in terms of you know acquiring these lands out there. Uh, and did you evaluate uh, you know uh, having leasehold properties instead of going for uh, outright acquisition yeah ms bansi we have actually been evaluated for sale in long period and sir sir probably in uh, gurugram with the rental cost what's there and also that effective utilized uh, utilization of the space what you rent is a very very low because almost 40% of the rental space will be invisible because of loading so therefore kind of when we work out it's probably better to kind of buy the land and build a greenfield project so we have a cash on the balance sheet so we are kind of taking that as an advantage so uh, we got the land parcels in a key areas which we wanted uh, uh, we will be kind of it may take an a year year year, year and a half extra to do the greenfield project but that that actually uh, positions us better to build a, a modern hospitals in a places like gurgaon where we are research uh, to build a uh, the truly a referral hospital for uh, multi specialty referral hospital for children in gurgaon of 300 beds uh, and also spoke hospital in a rapidly growing uh, uh, golf course and golf course has extension road i think i'm quite happy with what uh, uh, how it panned uh, 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 out uh, i'm quite kind of uh, it of course it takes some time to do uh, this project um i'm quite happy about uh, the way things are progressing okay and given this is from uh, haryana government uh, do we need to reserve beds here for uh, economically weaker section or, or are there any such uh, terms of agreement with the government so it's a, most of the hospitals in in gurgaon have got the similar clause uh, uh, it is a specialty hospitals there were 10% of the beds uh, are allocated for the economically Or uh, on the CHS rates uh, for super specialty hospitals, and uh, general hospitals they they will have kind of twenty five to the percent. Since I am going to build a super specialty children's hospital, I think I can uh, uh, negotiate on that. It's not a totally free bet, sir. Bansi, they will pay you on uh, on your uh, tariff. Uh, there is a discounted tariff. They get about some twenty percent discount on that rate. They will pay for the super specialty hospital. Okay, and on those days, are you still able to recover some of your fixed costs? We can do that. So it's unlike uh, the Delhi DDA, where you have to give totally free that you know the twenty five percent and the ten percent of IP, which twenty five percent of OP, totally free. Here it is not so actually. So we can definitely you know we can get a better rate. So the super specialty hospitals are uh, given a better rate by the Haryana government. Okay. and uh, the funding for this project uh, will be largely met through internal accrual yes yeah. um, okay in fact we have we have taken now we have allocated some money from ipo as well but you know we can meet uh, everything through internal accrual okay so you highlighted actually uh, you know 450 crores of investments uh, you know for this asset over the next 3 uh, 3 and a half years so i'm assuming uh, you know 160 odd crores out of this would be purely for the land so the balance uh, amount would be uh, you know it basically translates into a capex per bed of 70 lakhs or so is that correct i think it probably cost we need to see the how uh, uh, i mean uh, probably once we kind of have a designs on those things we will probably have a better idea about capex of the bed 
I think I would see it as a probably closer to the kind of 90 lakh crore rupees for that. Because in the, uh, if we are building a base for our future as a greenfield project, obviously mm-hmm. it will go as to be a high end hospital. Yeah, so this this 90 lakhs uh, is basically uh, inclusive of land cost, are you saying? No, uh, exclusive of land cost. Probably it's going to be about 1.2 to 1.25 cores, that's what I am. Including land. Including land, land I'm envisaging it. Okay, so sir, in that case, um, you know, how should we view uh, uh, the break-even timelines? Um, I understand, you know, Gurugram as a market is definitely, uh, you know, better paying market, so RPOPs also will be equally good. Uh, compared to the rest of the region, but uh, just in terms of uh, break-even timelines, uh, should that differ? Uh, given you know this is the capex. I think what we need to we would be working out is that you know how are we positioning this hospital and what is the kind of a construct of this hospital in terms of a, uh, uh, if it's a normal children's hospital intensive care services, so you don't need 300 beds. Okay, hmm. so. What I'm, I am emphasizing is to see that this is a uh, this is a uh, super specialty children's hospital with all the pediatric specialties, large intensive care services, and important care services to start in Gurgaon. So there's a good, uh, significant international opportunity for children to treat in this uh, hospital as well. So when you look around, uh, look at the, look at the opportunity, and uh, when we are building the hospital for today. Probably we need to kind of uh, 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 establish a hospital as a super specialty. It's almost like a multi specialty hospital, capex. It won't differ. If I am doing a children's hospital or spoke hospital, yeah, definitely it will come down capex up significantly. When I'm looking at a hospital of that stature, it's capex almost like a multi specialty hospital. Obviously, that you now it all depends on the kind of teams which I'm going to uh, bring in kind of a, uh, facilities what I'm going to provide and also what kind of a treatment offers what I'm going to offer. So that's uh, how it's going to pan out. Obviously with our, my experience of 20 years of building children's health care, what, what, what we have in Hyderabad today, if I position myself in uh, uh, Gurgaon uh, 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 Center, yeah, obviously that's we require to build a 300 bed hospital in Gurgaon. So this is what uh, background statistics have done. So another hospital, which is which is about 100 bed hospital, which is a uh, which is going to be like a uh, children's hospital with the maternity, ICU, and those things. Hello, Vanti. Vanti, do you have any oh. further questions? No, no. Uh, uh, this is clear. This is very helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. The next question is from the line of Pratesh Chheda from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, we quite didn't understand uh, this uh, this business model change. Uh, earlier, we used to have 50 lakh rupees a bed as the capex, and we have a combination of specialty and spoke hospital today in our uh, you know targeted regions or core regions of uh, Chennai, Bangalore, and uh, Hyderabad. Uh, how will this Gurgaon investment be different uh, from it, uh, and why is it different? And what are the how also how will the RPOB and the OR change in this kind of investment? So, uh, well, obviously, what I'm looking at is that you know in Gurgaon uh, is a, I see Gurgaon as a, not as a micro market. I see Gurgaon as a kind of a hub for the not, uh, NCR. Uh, Plus not. So when I'm presenting myself with the 20 years of experience in uh, uh, children's health care, uh, uh, we do need to build something which is of uh, uh, that reputation, credibility of uh, uh, providing a comprehensive care for children. So therefore, it, uh, it is definitely a, uh, differs from a routine children's hospital, which we have a capex uh, uh, as a brownfield project. It's a greenfield project, and it's going to be a high capex project. It's going to be a multi-specialty hospital, which is almost like a, your capex is going to be like a super-specialty adult hospital. So that's why it's going to be. Definitely, our pops will definitely be a very closer to the multi-specialty. Uh, uh, and also the, uh, the surgical work and specialty work is going to be closer to multi-specialty hospital. This is what I need to uh, in Gurgaon uh, Hub Hospital. 
you have a Hyderabad hub hospital also, right? Yeah. Right, and you would have a Bangalore hub hospital as well. So there, what has been your capex per bed? Is it? Uh, My Hyderabad hub hospital is about my capex was about 70 lakhs per bed, which is a brownfield project, which has been a kind of a semi warm, semi warm shell. So uh, my Chennai or Bangalore hospital was kind of a hub hospital, but we continue to uh, you know, put a capex as we were kind of adding more specialties in Bangalore. So in Gurgaon, I'm going to do everything at one go, which is why it is a, a different hospital. Everything at one go. So if you had to put a greenfield today, let's say, in Bangalore or Chennai or Hyderabad, what it would have come up to? And for a greenfield like, or for a specialty center like 300 bed of Gurgaon, how many spokes can you put then surrounding that hospital? Um, you mean to say that with that money, how many spokes can be done? No, no, not with that money. That 300 bed hospital can support how many spokes? Uh, Gurgaon, we don't see. Gurgaon is a small area, as I kind of say. This is a this is where we are going to be in uh, uh, right next to Huda City Center. That's the central point. From there, we can drive anywhere about in 15 minutes' time. Okay. This spoke, which is going to come in closer to the Golf, Golf Course Extension Road, in the Golf Course Road. So that will, that will cater for the rapidly growing Golf Course, Golf Course Extension Road uh, and uh, Golf Course Road area. So we will have a sufficient number of dates uh, uh, in Gurgaon uh, for, for, for a longer period of time. Okay. And how much does a uh, super specialty now cost if you had to set up a greenfield in, uh, let's say, Hyderabad or Bangalore, if you had to set up? Oh, you have to set up the, the super specialty hospital, it will cost the same. Probably it may cost a little more because the land cost here, if I to buy a private land, uh, it will be a kind of, a, a, probably it will cost a couple, 20 lakhs more. Okay. So excluding land, uh, it will cost about, uh, say, 80 lakhs. So the current uh, Hyderabad as well as uh, Bangalore hub hospital, we have set up you know, five years and seven years back, actually. So that time it has costed us, say, uh, 70, 60 lakhs. And then you they add upon that inflation also. And then this hospital, it will come next to one or two years because you just take permission with the thing construction. So obviously you will end up somewhere about uh, close to 80, 90 lakhs per bed, actually excluding land. Okay. Uh, sir, on the RPOP side, uh, you didn't answer whether uh, the, the specialty hospital in Gurgaon will have a RPOP. You said it will be closer to a normal specialty hospital. So yeah. there we have range. So max healthcare is at 60,000 rupees RPOP. But someone like Kim's is at 25, 30,000 rupees hour pop. So which one we should take? We should take 60,000 rupees hour pop for you? Well, we, right now we are in 48,000 hour pop. So we are we are not very low end hospitals. We are high end hospitals. Yes. We are not like Kim's and Narayana. Yes. We are more uh, Apollo's and uh, uh, Max Apollo. Yes. Right. Max is kind of a dominantly and a, a NCR hospital, in the city based hospital. So lot of surgical work being done, so which is why their hospitals are high. So as a children's hospital, which we like to position ourselves to be, not as our pops, we want to kind of offer for children of what adult is getting uh, in a multi-specialty hospital for a child. This is uh, as, a, uh, as a children's hospital group, what we would like to embark in NCR. So it will be higher than your current our of 48,000. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. <laughs> it's too early to, for me to guess that, that far. And lastly, sir, this RPOB and OR, which you have reported in FY23, uh, based on the capacity that we have, how much OR increase can you see further on your existing setup of 16 to that you have? Because yours are pretty seasonal, so there are two quarters, the season is very high, so you have higher OR and a couple of quarters with lower occupancy. So what is the blended annual number that we should uh, I'll tell you what, see, I mean, we, uh, in last year, I guided that, you know, we would do a kind of a 18 to 20% of a, a, a top line operating revenue. And uh, I would say, and uh, we'll still be high teams of uh, growth this uh, current year also. But I would like to also in, uh, emphasize on one uh, fact that, you know, we are adding almost uh, 270 beds plus we recently added 100 plus 50, 150. A total of 430 new beds are going to be there. 
Of course, there are going to be in existing areas where our reputation is at the highest level, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Chennai. The still, when you have so many of new beds, your growth, top line growth will be fine. There will be some degree of moderation on the margin. So, still, we'll see that you know we are we are in a kind of a, a area yes. which is yes. not a new geography. So, so, my, so, my question was that on the 1650 bed occupancy at 55 percent, right? For FI23, this 55 can go to what number? Can you reach 60 plus percent? Well, if we stop expanding, then it could go to 65% also. But we continue okay. to add uh, beds uh, for opportunity and okay. also build our business and footprint. Okay. And what is the risk of a price cap, if any, by government on pediatrics hospital? We have seen that happening in non-pediatrics uh, on certain uh, elective procedures. But do you ever think of a regulation by any chance? So, a bit unlikely because pediatrics is, because, is an emergency based hospital and it is not a packages hospital where you've got a cardiac, renals, and those things. Our packaging is very, very small, which is why we are probably uh, better off in that. But the government is doing all the times, you know, DPCO drugs, still, you know, this year also the gone quite a significant number of drugs. So, the government is doing its own way and insurance companies are doing their own way, while still we continue to have to do business. That's the life. Thank you very much and all the best to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arpit Shah from Sally and Asit. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah I just wanted to understand the sequential jump in Angara expense you can support to this fraud. Hello. Yeah, okay. Yes. The other expenses, you know, between the two quarters, December to uh, March, so it has increased by 16 crore. So this is uh, now due to that uh, we have uh, taken the due to expanded business. You know, we have taken a little more of ECL provision of about two crores, and then there is uh, you know, uh, kind of bad debts and uh, the the, pro, the return of which we have not done in other quarter. There is a one crore of you uh, know right of a share. Plus we have uh, you know incurred some expenses for our JCA. Repair and maintenance. Now we are our Bang Banjara Hills uh, flagship hospital. We are going for JC accreditation, and then we have done because always we do a lot of repair and maintenance in the Q4 uh, because we are we'll just prepare the hospital for you know, managing the season. And uh, there are a couple of other promotion business promotion also we have incurred. So that's where it's about uh, 16 crore. Q4 always would be having a higher other expense number uh, on a regular yes. basis, right? Yeah, so you, we do a little more of uh, R&M in this Q4. So that is the time we get a little bit of uh, free time normally. R is kind of a push for us, for us to kind of uh, get ready for hospitals for the next next year. Yeah. Also, we have opened a couple of hospitals in the last uh, quarter. So like the Stolling and Lure as well as financial districts. So some of the expenses are there, as you know, the running and maintaining the hospital, hospital maintenance and then we do a little more of marketing for those hospitals that has come in this section. Good. And if you can break up the number of bed addition every year, let's say from 24, 25, 26, what would be the number of bed additions? I've uh, well, already explained to you in the presentation. So what's going to come is that uh, there will be about 270 mm -hmm. beds are going to come in the, this current financial year. So we already added about 150 beds in the last financial year. So. This is uh, what another 150 beds, uh, 160. 160 are going to come in next 18 months' time. Uh, these are all going to come. Most of the hospitals are going to come in the southern part of India. Our uh, the the 400 beds, which probably will take about three and three to three and a half years' time, <laughs> really fast in execution. But I think we'll have to take that kind of time for green fields uh, in uh, Gurgaon in. In three, three to three and a half. So that's the landscape at the moment. But we always try to identify some, um, you know, the uh, schools and town fields, uh, the areas. Uh, we, we are negotiating some of the cities also in the neighborhood, like uh, uh, regional spokes like in Nellore and Coimbatore. But when they come into the kind of reality, I will speak to you. Got. And the insurance price hikes, which were, uh, uh, were supposed to be effective. Q4 for Hyderabad. So they were effective for how many months this quarter? 
So, uh, so they have been effective only for last 15 days uh, of uh, last quarter. The entire price hike will be there in this current year. And if you can just quantify that number for everyone, uh, the so, price hike which would come for FI24. So, uh, yeah. So for the next year, if you look at uh, our Hyderabad uh, insurance uh, business, should contribute about uh, 15 to 20 crores uh, uh, between 15 crores close to that. Got it. And for the Gurugram project, uh, where we are targeting about 450 crores of investment. Uh, and it will be ready by FI26 or uh, ahead. What kind of ROC or what kind of payback we are targeting over there? Well, it's a very different kind of investment that we are seeing uh, other than what we have done before. So what kind of payback? Because if you see our ROC, they have been closer to 25% uh, or so. But what kind of ROC we are targeting in this new Greenfield project? I think the payback of uh, such a high capex hospital in uh, industry works about 78 years. And that is what you're targeting? Is that something? We, uh, yes, it, it may take because, you know, uh, it, it's a uh, capex in a project and uh, definitely, so we may do it in about uh, eight years' time, we should do it. We should have payback. Yeah, seven, eight years. So Got it. it. Got it. Any guidance in the revenue and the margin fund? Sorry, I don't think any Greenfield project payback period will be a uh, five years or so. It is impossible. Because uh, these in multi specialty, I've been talking to my uh, peer groups and those things. About 70 years is a uh, uh, super performance for the payback for uh, 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 Greenfield projects. Of, uh, 200 to more than 200 bed hospitals. The smaller hospitals may be different, but the larger hospitals will take some time. Got it. Any revenue or margin guidance for FI24? I think so, as I earlier uh, told you, see, we have guided, when the, in the beginning of the first year, I was very clear that I needed to give a guidance. I, we kind of guided markets to kind of 350 crores of EBITDA, 11 crores of, 11 crores of top line, which we, we have kind of done very well. I've done, over, exceeded that. So the current financial year, I think there's already been uh, with our larger investors, we, we did actually uh, uh, put it as a business plan, the IPO, and uh, in the uh, initial investor calls uh, for about 420 crores of uh, uh, EBITDA for the 23-24. So I think with the, uh, what's important is the top lines are not going to be a big problem because we would achieve it. Uh, it our growth will be at a kind of 5 teams to uh, 20. And the, we'll have to look at the how the um, margins are going to be because we have this is the first time we are going to have almost like a 400 plus beds uh, new hospitals new beds uh, coming into the city but my I'm a little optimistic because there are quite a few number of beds are coming are built for the demand demand sake right and kind of a, uh, a future opportunity so let's see how it goes it's going to be difficult for me to do a quarter on quarter guidance because it, it doesn't work that way. If I, if I give you something, yeah. I don't want to go on. And year on year, it's a multi year business, honestly. It's a multi year business. And it's a growing story. It's a huge opportunity as a children's hospital to build in this country. I mean, when you look at the developed countries to us, where we are, we are nowhere. So, I mean, Rainbow is one which has been building it. I think an opportunity for me is to build this model strong. It's a multi year. And definitely, uh, people are going to be happy with their uh, returns uh, uh, on a longer term basis. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alankar Karuti from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sir, would you agree that uh, incidence of viral infections in the pediatric segment was a bit higher than usual in FI23? Oh, definitely, uh, uh, Mr. Alankar, because what has happened was that children have been, you know, uh, uh, almost like an electric, like a homebound for nearly two years' time. What has happened was when they've come out, COVID has never been a big problem So for children. COVID perhaps didn't really uh, touch too much of uh, complications, except few children had some cardiac issues and other problems. Uh, majority of them not gone through complications like adults or you know including death and those things that because the longer periods they have women kept in the uh, houses 
and uh, routine seasonal analysis have not been kind of uh, uh, occurred to them. So they have not built immunity sufficiently to deal with the routine viral infections. Normally, adenovirus is something as simple, severe uh, seasonal infection. So this comes as a kind of a, a surprise across the globe. It's kind of a, uh, now we do see an adenovirus infection every season. It's a kind of a, it is a, it's probably a kind of a, in, the, in the Western world, what they've seen is about five times increase in adenovirus infections, so leading to admission, sickness, all those things. I would think that in India it's much bigger. No, there's no statistical data on that. It is a much more uh, manifold increase in the adenoviral infections, which your children have been very sick actually, with some of them requiring intensive care and they're present with the pneumonia. So, which is why you see in the for third quarter we really struggled for beds and also our patients, our, our patients being chocolate lock with the um, not only adenovirus, the very, very, various other virus. Most of them. All of them, normally they are trivial, but the presentation was very pronounced because of the uh, staying at homes for a longer period and they have not acquired the normal immunity what they are supposed to get year on year. Understood, sir. So, in that case, uh, what is giving us confidence that we will be able to grow uh, over the 61% occupancy reported in FI23 in the mature hospitals? Yes, of course. So, so just wanted to understand the reason, sir. Uh, so, on that uh, relatively elevated base of uh, higher footfalls in FI23 due to acute infections, viral infection, uh, what is giving us that confidence, sir, that we'll continue to grow occupancies in the mature hospitals? No, I mean, at 60 per, 67 percent. Let me be honest with you that we struggled for the beds. We really struggled for the beds. What, what annoys me is that you know, when patients come, I won't be able to give a bed, and that's not good because in a, in a children's hospital, it's a very emotional state. In some, if somebody needs an admission, I'm not able to accommodate them. It is not right, actually. So therefore, this is business. One has to accept it, you know. I mean, if I can clock a occupancy of 65% in a study state in a, in a mature hospital, 65%, I would do the revenues or uh, revitas as much as others have to bring some paper because I don't have a government business. I don't have a people sitting uh, in the hospitals for longer periods. Our ALAs are low. The moment the child gets better, the moment someone delivers, they are ready to go home anytime soon, the moment they recover. So this is a different business model. And uh, we do need to build a capacity for the opportunity and also to have a more now more number of patients to teach it. This is how I look at the uh, children's hospital. So uh, please no, don't ever compare children's hospital occupancies with other hospitals. Uh, okay. Uh, so second question is, uh, if you look at uh, our experience of uh, Leeds versus uh, Greenfield, uh, till now, except Vizac, all our hospitals uh, have been leased. Now, given the upcoming Greenfield one in uh, Burgao, uh, can you take us through uh, your experience in Vizac over the past three, four years, and how would you compare it to your expansions across the other lease facilities? Vizac is a small city. I don't think, uh, uh, I'm not looking at Gurgaon as a Gurgaon city of 50, 60 lakh population, or 30 lakh population, or whatever it is. I'm looking at Gurgaon as a kind of a hub, medical hub for the, the northern India and also for international. This is how I'm trying to position this hospital for uh, uh, for children's health care. So if, you, if we look at the number of beds in uh, Gurgaon, is uh, uh, huge already. And there are going to be many more beds, many more thousands of beds are going to come into Gurgaon. Because in the landscape of NCR, if you look at it, Gurgaon is probably a place uh, uh, for health, easy health care destination. That's what uh, every health care leader thinks about it. So it's the Max or Apollos or... Medanta sir, uh, what is things about it? So I think I completely uh, uh, agree to that, that because it's the proximity of uh, Gurgaon to the many North Indian states. And are still, unlike Southern India, even today, the, the, the NCR focused completely of strategic care and advanced care for North. So people don't come from Bangalore to Hyderabad, Hyderabad to Chennai for any, any, treatment, any treatment, because they're well-developed. 
still people come from all over the northern uh, states uh, capital cities or rest of the uh, rest of the cities to delhi only for the all at once treatment so therefore we need to look at a delhi opportunity ncr opportunity as a northern india opportunity of six seven states plus international so this is how i i conceptualize this thought, this thought process to say that if we are going to be uh, we are we need to be there in a place where the, the, it is a uh, largest healthcare hub uh, is uh, is gurgaon so therefore we need to be there to kind of defend children's healthcare thank the uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, we would uh, continue to actively scout for facilities in delhi and noida Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, would it be fair to assume that uh, despite this uh, Gurgaon announcement, uh, we would continue to act- actively scout for facilities in Delhi city and Noida? Uh, I think uh, Delhi proper, I probably won't be kind of looking at uh, any green fields, very unlikely. And uh, Noida, of course, if there is a, it won't be a, as big as this one. I, uh, I think Noida doesn't rec- uh, would probably require about 100, 125 bed children's hospital, and uh, this will be the hub hospital for entire Delhi and CR. Fair enough, sir. Uh, and sir, sorry, just one last question with your permission. Uh, is there any change in seasonality patterns over the years? Uh, I mean, we have data only for the last three years, but if you look at uh, Uh, the drop in uh, quarter four margins for the previous two fiscals versus FY23 clearly uh, F- fourth quarter FY23 has been a bit of an outlier and you explain the reasons for the same but just uh, i mean uh, from a longer trend standpoint wanted to understand uh, have you seen over the years any change in seasonality across quarters uh, for our business i think uh, right from 2002 we have been seeing it we have seen the variations uh, of uh, Uh, seasonalities, uh, you know, uh, of uh, uh, particularly when we had a dengue outbreaks in the 2002 to 2007, 9, and we have seen kind of se- se- seasonalities got tweaked. Again, we have seen swine flus going up to the summer, and uh, the season seasonality got shifted. So it all depends on that, you know, the nature and rains and various other factors which actually influences that. the abnormal pattern of the viruses and also the infections uh, uh, prevails in the community sure sir thank you and all the best thanks sir ankar thank you the next question is from the line of prashant kutti from sundram mutual fund please go ahead uh yeah uh, thank you for the opportunity and congrats on a good set of numbers uh so first question is regard to the occupancy part of it uh while you highlighted that in the mature beds We typically would be doing about 60-65 percent. Uh, even, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but even in a relatively, uh, uh, let's say, a muted quarter, which typically Q4 is, uh, we still have managed to deliver a very good occupancy numbers. Uh, you highlighted that there would be some uh, one-off uh, because viral infection is high and all. But incrementally, uh, can you actually assume 65 to 70, 65 to 67 percent being a, a norm for uh, the mature hospitals? So you would like to know the, the 67 percent for the mature hospitals in uh, in uh, without being any seasons, right? Seasons. Yeah, because yeah, exactly, yeah, without being the season, yeah. Okay. Well, the thing is that clocking over 60 percent occupancy is more important. Whether it's a uh, whether the four five percent delta is always going to be a, a, a debatable. Question is that you know what kind of case mix you have in the hospital is more important. Sometimes we had about 55% occupancy. We had done a bigger revenue than actually a 65% occupancy. What is the see? Sometimes you have you may have a huge season and uh, your your occupancies are very high, but some the your, when your beds are not occupied uh, with intensive care services, then the revenue is very 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 minuscule. So it, it all depends on the case mix and also sickness and. Uh, uh these are the things that determines the overall your revenue generation in a in a in a children's hospital but suffice to say that when you're talking about at least you're looking for at least above 60% plus kind of a uh, number for the for the mature hospitals yeah yeah uh, be, be, be it any point of time be it a season or non season point of time 
Yeah, yeah, right. Mature hospital will clock 50 plus per Got it. And, uh, so another point was that, again, uh, the reference point was typically the fourth quarter of a year usually used to be slightly uh, more muted compared to the second and the third quarter. Uh, this, however, uh, this, this quarter, however, some seems to be a bit of a uh, uh, bit of an aberration. We have done really good numbers and both top line as well as an EBITDA front. Uh, should one take this as a more a bit of a norm in terms of uh, uh, from a reference point or uh, uh, is, uh, again, is there, are there any one-off elements over here? Because as compared to our Q4-21 or Q4-22, I understand those had some uh, impact of uh, COVID and all. But uh, because this is a quarter where uh, there was no such uh, uh, things, is that a far more uh, normalized quarter for us? Yeah. yeah. Well, so I wouldn't take any quarter as a reference point. I would take an uh, overall and a year as a reference point. The reason is year to year is uh, I can uh, fairly talk about it with uh, because it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be impossible in an emergency-based hospital to pay, talk about the consistency of quarter and quarter. It, they can keep shifting to uh, one quarter to other quarter. But overall, in a year, we can kind of uh, envisage to say that this is what we can do. As I earlier uh, uh, gentleman asked me a question, that's what I said. I mean, we our growth trajectory will continue to be high teens towards the 18 19 percent and uh, 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 the revenue, and we will have to kind of see which quarters are going to be uh, uh, higher, which quarters are going to be moderated. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a thing. I'm sorry, I wouldn't like to do this. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, sure, I'll get that point. But the reason for asking this was, sir, uh, typically if you look at it, uh, overall, uh, the data numbers uh, look to be far more superior. Uh, and uh, Obviously, it's a function of the mature hospitals doing well, but uh, again, a point to that, uh, ha is, the, is the newer hospitals, uh, we're not seeing so much of change in the occupancies over there. I understand that those are relatively new and will take their time, uh, but are we seeing acceleration in that happening uh, where the occupancies could kind of jump up faster over there? Uh, I mean, is, uh, have the payback for these uh, uh, spokes which you, talk, which you recently added or which you're going to add, uh, have they been uh, kind of coming off? Oh, definitely. See, what happens is, you know, business. for example, in Hyderabad. So Hyderabad is kind of a, it's a matured market for us. I'm doing more and more bets in Hyderabad for a demand. So I wouldn't have any problems. I mean, for me, if I start a hospital in Hyderabad, you know, I would worry about even uh, what is that, you know, it's going to take, burn any cash. It will definitely not burn cash for sale itself. So when I do a kind of a geography with a newer, uh, still we're building our uh, reputation like Chennai and those things, it may take a year. When second spoke to third spoke, it'll get better. Fourth to fifth spoke, it'll get, get even better. So that is overall reputation of your hospital or brand, uh, or how strong your clinical, uh, these are all things going to matter. So today we are sitting in Hyderabad. We, I mean, I know you're concerned to add, yeah, we're almost getting closer to 1,000 beds in Hyderabad by end of the year, almost 940 or 950 beds. So it's a, I never imagined that we're going to do so many beds. But I continue to do it because there's a need and there's a demand. So we've gone to Bangalore. Yeah, we're going to get to 500 beds. And uh, still opportunity is there. So there's a lot of beds are there to build a business and those things in Bangalore. Chennai, we clocked very well in the hub hospital, second, third year, then extremely well. Then we, that, that's why we added kind of a, uh, one more spoke, and we, one more spoke is going to come this year. So it all depends on how we have placed ourselves to do business, what is the reputation of the hospital, what are the medical doctors whom we have. These are all the determinant factors the hospital to do well, and then the payback period will reduce significantly. The so brownfield sites naturally, you know, you would take much less to that period than uh, greenfield projects. So uh, this is how I look at our business. So when we are kind of such a strong business in South, so obviously uh, Delhi, when I go in there, places like Gurgaon, where everyone is bullish about uh, uh, being a healthcare hub or healthcare capital, definitely I need to be there because as a as a as a pioneer in children's healthcare. Sure. Which means that uh, in the next year or so, even the newer hospitals or in the next two years should see an increase or should see an acceleration in the occupancy numbers. Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm, I, I expect to do. Sure, 
sure, definitely. And one last point, sir, uh, in terms of margins, uh, uh, it's been a very good year in terms of margins as well. You did highlight that you are putting up almost about 400 odd uh, beds between the one which already added 150 and then another 250 in the next year. Uh, given what you spoke about on the occupancy front, uh, should, should one assume that margins really shouldn't correct much uh, compared to what you would have earlier thought? I think when you have so many beds being added, that there will be some degree of margin pressure will be there. Sure, fair point, fair point. But I'm just asking, earlier you were probably uh, working from a 30-31% kind of a number. You already clocked in about 34, so I'm just asking from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there will be some. We always say, you know, the free in days of 25%, because whenever we expanded earlier also, we have seen that, you know, it is clocking at that rate. So the last two years, yeah. Bed addition was less, that's so, why you know it has uh, gone to that 34, 35 percent. So we are Understood. saying that will be 30 percent, you know, post in days. Uh, it's doable considering that you have a bucket of good number of matured hospitals, and then you are adding new addition. So 30 percent is doable. Understood. Sure. Thank you so much, sir, and all the very best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawan Shah from RFI Create Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my question is related, you know, uh, to the uh, cost of medical consumable. If I look at, you know, on the YOY business, it's been down by around 20 odd percent, and versus yes. the other cost is more or less up by 25 percent. So just wanted to understand your yes. your thoughts on this part because our uh, I think the inpatient volume growth was roughly. 25% so how should we calculate uh, these two uh, uh, heads uh, if you can help on this thing the consumable is always about 14-15% uh, actually so last year we have done a COVID vaccination which is a less margin business compared to hospital business so that's why it was about 20% uh, now it has come to normal because of normal hospital business it has come down so you can take, you know, going forward, in our normal circumstances, it will be, even you see the earlier year trend also, it's about 14-15%. Okay, and what about the other cost? Other cost is, you know, uh, it, it ranges about, you know, uh, 7%, 7 to 8%, it will not be more than that, actually. We have, see, again, what is the, you know, because of the, the the professional fee is grouped separately, so obviously it's about uh, seven, uh, six, seven percent, and then including the bed addition, and everything, and uh, it it gives us an opportunity for a better operating leverage. Also, it can come down. If you don't add, it will come down. Otherwise, it remains it stands there. No, but if I, you know, even the professional fee to the doctor is already excluded in the financial statement, but still, you know, if yeah. I do the math of seven eight percentage on the eleven seventy four crore, it comes to around eighty two odd crore. So it's uh, more than that, around 200 crore is the other cost for the year. Uh, no, doctors are 20%, 22%, 22% doctors. Hey, uh, you, 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 you got clarification or uh, solution? No, 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 no. So basically, you know, uh, as you mentioned that the other cost should be 78% of sales, excluding the professional fee. So professional fee line item is already, you know, uh, apart from uh, other expenditure. So if I do the math, other cost comes to around 17% for the FY23, as against 7 to 8% you are highlighting. So uh, is there anything I'm missing over here? No, no, you are not uh, missing anything actually. It's about, I think, uh, 200 and 2 gross. No? So, yeah, it's about uh, 17%. I think, uh, yeah, that's right only. Right only. So, how should we assume? Because I think the other cost for the year has been increased. So, any any uh, fixed cost uh, into this part or any? Uh, we have we have added two more hospitals in this uh, no, uh, financial year, you know, late in the last quarter. And uh, there is an increase in marketing expenses as well and you know, repair and maintenance. So that's where you will see compared to FI 22 to 23 on a full year basis, there is an increase actually. Okay. So on yearly basis, I think the advertisement and the repair maintenance cost should be how much uh, if we compare? So on an average, we, we spent about you know, uh, between 2 to 3 percent we spent on the marketing and you know, business promotion expenses. Okay. On the on the top lane, and the repair and maintenance cost. 
So that will be about uh, uh, two and a half percent. Okay. Okay. And the second question is about you know the recruitment timing. So we'd like to understand about the new hospital that we we are adding roughly four hundred odd beds uh, in the next two to three years. So what is the normal recruitment timing for uh, new ones? And uh, any EBITDA per bed uh, number for the mature versus the new hospital that you can give? And the how do you see the mix uh, going forward in next two to three years? Because uh, right now around seventy percent of the uh, overall bed is from the mature one. And given that we are adding uh, 400, 500 beds, so how do you see the overall mix uh, going forward? I think it will become a 50-50 percent because we are adding a significant number of beds this year, so uh, it will kind of become a 50-50 percent mature and uh, mature. I need to see that how many are going joining mature group also. Some of the hospitals may join. So the The because of the bed additions and those things, uh, the mature uh, maturing hospitals will little bit change. To last two years and the COVID year, we had much, and last year there's only a uh, 50 beds been added. Uh, so therefore, if we have we don't see much of uh, 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 in the maturing beds. I think this year will change significantly to the uh, maturing hospital. Number only one hospital. Only one. Only particular in the children's hospital will move. Only one. Only one hospital. So there will be more on the, the new hospital. Side. New hospital group. New hospital group. In terms of uh, you know you ask other thing is about uh, break-even points and those things. Hyderabad we do kind of a break-even in the first year itself. It's not a problem for us. In Chennai and Bangalore will take one and a half year, twelve to eighteen months time. Is a Uh, uh, break even depends on the location, size of the hospital, and those things. That's how we look at it. Uh, our break even. And the EBITDA per bed for a mature versus new hospital? No, so we don't calculate we don't the EBITDA uh, per bed level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. difficult. Okay. okay. So, given that you know the mix would be. Thank you, sir. I would request you to please join the queue box sure. for further questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Mankuria from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Kandelwal from SIMPL. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So in uh, your matured assets, if you look at the occupancy in the Hyderabad cluster, we were at around uh, 65 percent. We were on a DRHP, but for Bangalore and Chennai, we were at around 50 percent. So just wanted to know how has it uh, has the occupancy ratio for Bangalore and Chennai improved? They have improved overall, and uh, we don't do actually uh, 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 the city-wise cluster. We look at the matured and the maturing hospitals. So hospital to hospital, we don't really do it. City, city to city, city. It becomes too complex for us to do. Uh, therefore, um, they have definitely increased. Otherwise, we won't see any person doctor entry. Right. And uh, in our mature hospitals, uh, you said our occupancy is around 60 to 65 percent. So, just wanted to understand if the future revenue growth for the company would come only from setting up new centers, or there is scope for growth to come from mature centers as well. No, it comes from both because mature hospitals will continue to grow in terms of uh, some occupancy and also price mix and also case mix. Definitely, uh, they will continue to grow. What uh, our experience is that now we continue to grow in the mature hospital also in terms of revenue size. Okay, and uh, as for my calculation, our inpatient volume. For our new centers, which was in the range of 3,800 to 3,900 in the last two quarters, has increased to 4,300 to 4,400 this quarter. So, has this increase majorly come from our new centers opening in Chennai and Hyderabad, or our existing centers have also seen an increase? No, the, across all the new centers, because of the, this, uh, the viral epidemic is uh, global. Actually, it's not a city, city, city. We have seen across the country and across the globe. We have seen this. Uh, Uh, viral infections in children. Right. Uh, okay. And our inflation realization uh, increase will primarily come from two factors: inflation and patient mix. We just wanted to understand what kind of increase can we expect from both these factors going forward. 
sorry, I didn't get it. The, the price increase, you know, we, we are saying on an average our ARPA will increase by about uh, 7 to 8% year on year. So you can take about... Uh, so put together 7 yeah, put to together 8 together This, this yeah. includes the uh, no, case mix and uh, inflation. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anish Deora from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so, uh, for the Burga facility, I mean, it's a completely, uh, it's a newer geography than South India where you're currently dominant. So do you foresee any change in the doctor engagement model that you would have for the Burga facility? Uh, so in South India, you have the doctors on a full-time basis, 24-7 availability kind of a thing. So do you think that would be possible in the Gurkha region or do you, are you looking at any other doctor engagement model for that uh, geography? Children's hospitals, if you want to drive across the cold, it is an institutional model, what I've told the fundamentals. So you, you may actually have a different uh, engagement model, uh, but it has to be a full-time commitment doctor. So that is a uh, that is a gold standard for children's hospitals. So I think that we would work towards that. I think that maybe price points may be different from uh, doctor payment, uh, but expectations. But the uh, but it, children's hospital demands full time doctors to deliver quality and to deliver results. Understood. So, so probably you are indicating that uh, the doctor payments in the Gurgaon region could be higher than what uh, the average would be in South India currently. Yeah, your price points will be higher. Your doctor costs will be higher. Yeah, we need to be a kind of a, uh, uh, clear on that. Okay, understood. So, thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karthik Narayan from SCP India Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, firstly, uh, congratulations not just on the on the numbers but also the clinical results. I think it's, it's fantastic. I, most of my questions were answered. I had a couple of uh, follow-ons. One is with respect to the 48% uh, percent growth that you've seen this quarter. If you had to break that down into price increase and volume increase, how much of that came from prices, uh, either through insurance or cash prices, price increases, and how much from volume, uh, that would be helpful. I've done the, not in the calculations. Yeah. I mean, definitely, it is more of a uh, the volume, volume, volume driven as well as the kind of a, a, the case mix. Yes, but, uh, I can probably tell you that we've done a lot of intense scale work and um, mm -hmm. a lot of sick children. So, more of volume and also the case mix than price. Understood. Understood. So, uh, and if I were to look at the full year, I mean, since you mentioned earlier that it's better to look at the full year, the 20% uh, year on year growth, would you say it's similar? Is it mostly related to volume versus price? Yeah, I think we have, we have always delivered. And even the pre IPO, the last 10 years' time, we delivered it. I hope to do that. So, uh, uh, yeah, of course, you know, that's been our, uh, we have done it. So, Still, we've always been saying there's a high teens to 20, so the growth. I would mm -hmm. think that it will be any problem for that. Okay. Yeah. Just, to add, just to add, you know, if you look at X of COVID, our, our, our problem has increased on an annual basis by 4%. If you break down the 20% growth, you know, 4% has come from tariff and case mix, and the rest has come from volume mix. Understood. Understood. That's helpful. And one question related to the full year numbers. So if I look at FY22 versus 23, we had a, a strong 20% year on year growth. Uh, but the doctor costs have, uh, the professional fees to doctors was around 34%. So has there been any change in terms of the way we have uh, uh, engaging with the doctors in the past year? I think there's, there's a lot of new doctors being added uh, to the pool. Uh, mm -hmm. New doctors and also few new centers have come. As a new center, because our doctor engagement model is full time. Mm -hmm. So when you send start a new center, that our doctor cost goes significantly higher. Mm -hmm. So I'm therefore, uh, the doctor cost goes up. What we always see is that doctor cost goes between uh, 22 to 24 percent. Uh, really, it goes up to 25 percent also. Understand. So 25 percent is perhaps the benchmark that you aspire to to maintain, even as you. Uh, I would get worried if it's beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Understood. And uh, no, I think that's all I had. Again, congratulations on the results, both clinical and Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yogesh Tiwari from Arihan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, I had certain questions on the balance sheet. So last year we had this uh, goodwill of about 30 million, uh, which we do not have now. So if you can uh, share some details on the theme. Right, sir. Uh, no, uh, it's a con it's a con on the control. The goodwill was you know, uh, uh, created long back when we uh, merged to one of our subsidiaries in way back in 2000. 14, 15. So that, you know, as a prudence, you know, calls for the writing up and goodwill. So we have taken it and uh, it's not, it's not very material amount. So, uh, uh, two, two process, so, sir, going forward, there will not be, uh, we can assume there will be no, uh, nothing in terms of goodwill going forward? No, no, there is nothing. No, no, no intangible like goodwill in the books. Sure, sir. And sir, other thing on the intangible. So we have some intangible assets uh, jumped from uh, like 1 crore to 4 crore. And there are some under a development from 1 crore to 2 crore. So how do we look at this? Uh, like what would be under development and other, other intangible assets and the jump in the scene? It's an I, it's a, see, we are implementing new HIS actually. So it's all IT related. Now some of the software, you know, what we are implementing and those are all, you know, we have... Uh, we are kind of upgrading our HIS after seven years, you know. So that, that related to that, we bought you know, some of that actually. Sure, sir. So just for the modeling purpose, uh, would it be remain in the same range for FI24? Uh, so in FI24, we may incur another about you know, uh, two, three crores uh, towards this actually to complete the entire implementation and uh, you know, the, the new software, whatever we do. The PA tool, all those things. Another two to three crores will spend on this. So, like two to two three crores uh, more under asset uh, intangible asset under development, it might include. Right? Yeah. Yes. Current uh, no, current FI, you will see the addition of uh, two to three crores. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, sir. Just last one question. On the other financial assets, uh, it has increased by about fifty-five crores to two thirty-four crores. So, if you can share uh, the spike in the other financial asset. It's actually the uh, fixed deposits what we have. So, you no, know, it, it's based on the reclassification we have done. So, as per that, you know, any any deposit which is having a maturity of more than twelve months has to go to the other financial asset that is gone actually. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, yes. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments. So thank you very much for uh, uh, all the uh, uh, analysts in this community for patiently listening, and uh, we continue to engage. Of course, uh, if there are any questions, they, they, you, you may reach out to the, our investor relations team. Um, so thank you very much, uh, CDR and uh, all the uh, analysts and investors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.